our estuary areas are actually serving as nursery areas. So these sharks are giving birth to their young of year, and the young of year are either swimming up into the estuaries or they're actually coming in and giving birth, and then the adults, for the most part, are moving out to different waters. Uh, so these nursery areas are really highly productive. If you know anything about the salt marsh, it's a really productive system. And because of that, there's a lot of food for these young sharks. Uh, it's a safe place relatively to grow up. There's some big sharks, but there's not many. So uh, these sharks are really vulnerable at these younger stages, and sharks do eat sharks. It's pretty much the, the one thing that eats sharks. Uh, so we have a primary nursery, which is the young of year sharks, and then we also have the secondary nurseries to where we have juveniles using these areas, and then at the same time some adults use them. Uh, and then as we move down into the sound, we get a lot of our larger sharks, uh, more adults, and uh, we'll kind of describe that as we go along, guys. But uh, tiger <coughs> sharks, up until last year, we didn't know a lot about them. We knew that they were here. Um, a lot of what we had was just anecdotal. Uh, we're learning by the day with them. Um, abundance is, is unknown. Um, we don't have enough species-specific data for these guys to, de to, to tell population uh, trends. Uh, but generally what we think we know from piecing things together is these guys were fished down, but they're starting to recover and they're even on the way up. Um, and that's due to, uh, they have a pretty prolific for a large shark. Uh, these guys max out over 14 uh, feet. They have a pr pretty prolific life history strategy. They only take about 10 years to mature. They live 40 years and they're putting out 10 to 30 pups every uh, three years. Um, but if you're living to 40 years, you know, that's a lot of pups over your lifetime. And these pups are 32 inches. Um, they're not this big. I have another slide later that shows their size when they're born. But they're pretty much larger than, than most of the other pups out there. So they have a size advantage and they probably have a pretty high survivability. Um, if you ever see a pup uh, tiger shark, they're all head, all mouth. These guys, you know, they pretty much just feed and feed and grow. They're one of the few sharks, um, they double every year for the first three years in size. So they grow really quickly and they get out of that uh, danger zone to where something else might eat them. Um, we're learning, you know, every day about what kind of tiger sharks we have in the sound. Uh, generally, we don't see the young of year in the sound. What we're seeing is larger juveniles, you know, sharks around 100, 200 pounds you know, six, seven feet, all the way up to the adults. We don't really know what they're doing here yet, but we're learning, and uh, we're, we're attempting to find out. You know, I imagine it, you know, the sound is, is an incredibly uh, rich food source for them, and I think they're, you know, um, I think it ultimately relates to food, although there may be evidence, um, you know, we've seen some evidence that it may have something to do with breeding. Um, so we're really trying to learn on that, but Bobby's going to talk. Um, they are considered dangerous, but there's little evidence, at least on the East Coast, that they're implicated in, in shark bites. Um, much more so um, in areas like Hawaii, um, West Coast, to where there's um, food sources that more resemble humans that they're feeding on. 